and what's up guys Brian here with another video and today I will be doing a review on all of the bases in-depth review we'll be going over everything every aspect of the bases that I like and all the things that I don't really like all too much so sit back and enjoy and I appreciate you guys for watching all right guys the first base we will be looking at here is the fire watch base the one that you start at when you uh, first start the game. Now, the thing about this base is it is very good. It's that. It's a starter base. You know, it's enough to get by. But I do believe that the base is underpowered in comparison to the other starter bases. Only because it is lacking the extra set of beds that the uh, other starter bases have. And the kitchen. The other starter bases come with the three slots. The three outdoor slots. And this one has the three slots. But... It does not have the built-in kitchen that the other bases have or the built-in master bedroom that the other one have. So that at that point, this makes this base a little weaker um, than the other base, the other starter bases. The base comes with a built-in infirmary, which can be torn down. Uh, you don't have to keep it up, but it does come with a built-in infirmary. Um, I guess that is a plus side, so when you start the game, you don't need to worry about using materials, especially in Nightmare Zone, the increased cost of materials, uh, everything is 6 or 10, you know, stuff like that. So you that's one less expense that you have to worry about when starting a new playthrough. But other than that, guys, the downside to the the another downside to this base is compared to the other starter bases that have the three outdoor slots which i personally believe outdoor slots are a lot better than indoor slots because there's a lot more facilities that can be used in both an outdoor slot and an indoor slot and these are considered indoor slots so you can't put a farm let's say i want to put a farm here you can't Oh, where is it? Where the hell is the farm, guys? This one. It, you can't put the garden in there because it's not an outdoor slot. So I believe that is a downside. Now, this base does come with this one outdoor slot. But this one, for some reason, it's considered an indoor slot. And that one's also considered an indoor slot. So I believe that is a downside of this base. All in all, I believe it's a pretty good base to start with um it's a good starter base but as quick as quick as you can just get your fourth person and move to the other base one more cool feature guys that i found with this base is the built-in survey point the tower is just that that's all it is is just a built-in survey point it doesn't uh allow you to do anything but you don't have to travel anywhere to survey the initial area when you first start the game. It's built in right in your base. You literally just walk up to the top of the tower and you can survey the area. All right, guys. Now, the next base here in the line of bases, which is right down the hill from the starter base. Now, this base, guys, on the other hand, is a, I guess you could say medium size base. It's not very big, but it's also not very small. Now, this base does come with a lot more than the original starter base. This is what the base looks like when you first move into it. It has a biker kitchen, which you can restore, um, built in. It obviously has the built in storage. It has a built in watchtower, which is a fuel tank wash tower disconnected, which we will get more into here in a moment. It has the three indoor slots, which two of them are clearable pews, which will give you five materials when cleared. And it also has one outdoor small slot and two large slots. Now, the two large slots, when you first move into the space, are full. But the good thing about them is this can be cleared with either programming or you can force it off of the large slot using seven um manpower but the only difference is when you do it with this you get the error log which can be sold i have not found any value to the error log it's not even worth that much influence um it's a pretty cool code 
we'll clear that off just so you guys can see. But once that large slot is cleared, you ha then will have two large slots. One comes with the also has the built-in auto shop. But the good thing about this built-in, guys, is you can tear it down. All right, guys. Now, the next thing we will be getting into is the fuel tank watchtower. The fuel tank watchtower is pretty good, guys, when it comes to uh, a built-in watchtower because the benefit that this watchtower has compared to other watchtowers is... It's disconnected, but you can connect it with power, and it inc it gives you 15 fuel. Now that the fuel tower has been connected, I gained my 15 fuel, and I also gained one plus 100 max fuel storage. So now this base has become kind of like the other bases on the other maps that have those built-in huge fuel storages but it acts as that and it also acts as a watchtower so this is a very powerful facility in my opinion i believe it is a uh, very good and you can also put a mod on it so that is the fuel tower i believe this uh facility is very unique uh across all the bases and now we'll move on to the next facility all right guys now as you can see the Facility has been cleared here. The um, Clio Relay is now gone. You gain some pretty decent stuff off of the Clio Relay. I gained a some white phosphorus grenades. It's very hard to keep track in my uh, base community screen because I have so much stuff. But you gain um, a cup of weapon. I gained an M4. You gain some Willy Peak grenades. Um, you gain the five ammo, five food. So it's 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 a pretty decent clear. Um, I I honestly was a little disappointed in it. I thought that we were going to get something kind of unique to the, uh, like maybe the old State of Decay 1 that we'd get some State of Decay 1 weapons or something like that, but it wasn't. It was just some of the stuff. It seemed like out of the rare weapons case that you find around the map, like it seemed like you can get that type of materials out of it. But as you can see, now once that is clear, you now have a large slot. And then also, like I said, if you do not want the auto shop you can clear this base to now have two large slots one outdoor small slot and three indoor slots now like i was trying to tell you guys with the other base the i personally prefer more outdoor slots than indoor slots so i feel like this base is somewhat limited on what you can do outdoors but since it already has a watchtower built in and you have the two large slots being mid game you probably would be able to use one of these for a farm or if you did want to go the hydroponics route you would be able to go hydroponics on the inside of the building all right guys and here we are located in the biker kitchen of the base and this base has this kitchen built in now this kitchen is unique guys compared to all the other kitchens that you see built into the game in this kitchen, you can serve around a moonshine, which boosts morale, increases zombie threat, and reduces labor. But it is a pretty big morale boost of plus 10, so, and it gives your people a break. You know, let them drink. Take some time off. And also, guys, built into here, which if you guys looking at the outside of this, you would never notice that there was anything new with this kitchen. It kind of has the same features as all the other kitchens except this so one might look at this and assume that this is about the only thing new but no if you actually click on the make item and produce food icon it has the same functions as a normal kitchen but down here guys you can produce luxury items so you can craft ethanol and you can also craft moonshine now, the only downside to the moonshine that I notice when you do craft it, it takes a very long time to craft with the base morale and stuff. Um, it does seem to take a very long time to craft. And when it does craft, it doesn't seem like the moonshine is really worth um, a lot of influence. Um, so I don't personally think it's worth. I believe the ethanol that you use to make the moonshine is worth more than the moonshine itself. But you can also here convert your food over to ethanol, which 
I guess if you wanted to go that route, you can take food, turn it into ethanol, then take your ethanol and turn it into moonshine. All right, guys, but all in all, I believe this base is unique in its own right. Having the built ends, being able to deconstruct them, I personally feel this base has a decent amount of customization. I don't think it's a very bad base at all. It's, it's semi-unique. So on to the next one, guys. And here we are, guys. We are now located at the third base on the map, which is actually conveniently located right down the road from the other one. Now, the top three bases are in a very small area of each other, all right along the top line of the map. That's the one thing about this map is there is no bases that are really centrally located. I guess you could say the most central base would maybe be this one because you can just go right to the middle, but... For the most part, it seems like there's top and bottom bases. Here we are, guys. And this base is kind of, I would say, my personal favorite. I prefer this base over the others, mainly due to the fact that it has more small slots. It's a, l a lot more customizable than the other bases on the map. This one, as you can see, guys, it doesn't come with the same built-in facilities that the other base had, such as the built-in kitchen or the built-in watchtower slash fuel tank. But this base definitely offers more personal customization compared to the others. Now, the one thing that it does come with, it comes with a baseline automatic storage of 25 for all resources and plus 20 for store uh, materials ammo it has plus 20 for everything so if you guys look this base has a ton of storage guys 50 ammo 50 like this is great storage levels so yes it doesn't have many built-in facilities has none really other than the storage and the command center but i personally believe this base is probably the most customizable base of all of the bases now, if we come and we look, this base also comes with the built-in Cleo, the failed Cleo drop, which we can clear once again, and it will give us our stuff. Now, once this is cleared, this base will then have two large uh, slots and the three outdoor slots. I, I feel like you can do a lot of customization with this base. You guys let me know good combinations of because that's what i'm tr currently trying to figure out right now myself is what is the best combination of facilities in this base um the only thing i i, I was thinking was you know you can run uh, a farm maybe uh along with like a trade depot that's generally what i usually run as farm trade depot or i could uh, it depends on what i want to do at my outpost there's a lot of customization in this base guys so if you guys have found the magic recipe the secret recipe for making this base a powerhouse let me know what you guys think in, a, in the comments below but this base is personally my favorite of all the bases there's not much to say about this base guys outside of the fact that you know it's kind of just a blank slate when you move in it comes as the beds built in and the clear drop but once cleared you can kind of do whatever you want with this base. I, I personally like it. It is my favorite base on the map. It is the only downside, I guess you could say, is its location. But I feel that all the bases are kind of located in uh, bad spots. So now we'll move on to the next one, guys. All right, guys. Here we are located at one of the first large bases on the map now this one is located south it's in the southwest side of the map pretty far from everything else but if you guys notice the middle of the map outside of this town is kind of a large empty ish area so it being located this is actually one of the bigger i guess you could say city areas in the map but this base I had the I guess you could say the highest hopes for I was very very excited for so let's get into it and I'll let you guys know what I now think about this base all right guys so digging into this base 
This base comes with a ton of pre-built facilities. It has the two large slots located outside, has two empty sl small slots outside, and then it has one small slot that you can customize on the inside. Now, the thing about this base, guys, that it it's... I guess you could say I don't really like the fact that it comes with the built-in generator uh, being in a big base like this because for people like me who have already beat the game and have the boons, a lot of guys are going to already have a built-in or have the boon going for the builder boon. And now this is just a wasted facility that will just sit here and never be used. And you can't remove it from... Now, if you could remove it or remove any of these, it would be a little better, but you can't remove that. Next, you have a built-in bathroom which is nice and all because you can fix it up and it will help boost morale but like outside of that like what other reason do you need for the bathroom it come it does come with uh four beds and then plus two here for the uh sheltered beds but for most of us due to the lack of customization of this base are probably going to want to turn this into something else it does have a kitchen, it comes with a built-in gym, and it also comes with a, a built-in tower. But ultimately, guys, I, I, at first I really thought, like, oh, this base is going to be a lot of fun, like, it has everything, you, but it has a lot of stuff that I guess a lot of people might not always, like, you don't always need a fighting gym. A fighting gym is, is nice to have when you first are starting and you're trying to level up your characters, but once you have your character's all leveled up, you don't really need a fighting gym anymore. A lot of people don't even run a kitchen. A lot of people don't run a latrine or a generator. So right there are four small slots that will never really be utilized, which at the end of the day, yes, this base is very low maintenance once you do spend the humongous amount of com like time to go and fix all of these facilities. Across the board, you're looking at at least 4, 8, 12, 16, 24 minutes, almost 30 minutes, guys, of repair time just to get this base up and running to not even really utilize all of the facilities it comes with. The one feature that this base does have is the bell tower across the way. Now, I didn't know how effective this was really going to be, but, guys, it is actually somewhat impressive on how effective this is I'm just gonna let you guys see how many zombies so shooting this it really does break pull all the zombies and if you guys notice they all pull right underneath it. So if you want to clear out the area, you just shoot this a couple times, come over here, and hit them all with a Molotov. And they all stand down in this lower area. So I thought that was a pretty cool feature. But outside of that, guys, this base really doesn't have much customization options. It looks nice. I'd say it's probably one of the more aesthetically pleasing bases in the game. But I just personally feel, due to the fact of all the built-in facilities, that it really limits what you can do with this base. Um, so that that's my personal opinion. But let me know what you guys think about the fire station in the comments below. And I will be moving on to the last and final base on the map. And all right, guys, here we are, the last base on the map. And this one was supposed to be the holy grail of all the bases. And that's the way Undead Labs was speaking about it. So that's the way I took it when they were talking about it. But digging into it and speaking with a lot of you guys, so let's just go over this really quick. The location of the map is, or the base is on the opposite side of the map compared to the firehouse. It is also located in, I would say, a more industrial area. There's a lot of warehouses uh, located around here, so it's definitely a place to find quite a bit of materials, guys. Now, let's get into the base. Now, this base, guys, as you all know, was supposed to be 
the hot commodity because of the five large slots. I believe Undead Labs addressed this base as the Infinity Gauntlet of bases. So, the one thing it does come with is this. This huge lumber pile. By clearing this, you gain 10 materials, guys, which I believe is pretty good. 10 materials, 2.5 minutes. It's not a bad deal. Now, this base, guys, the only issues that I'm ha I, that a lot of you guys uh, have been explaining is... A lot of you guys have been, uh, it doesn't have any outdoor small slots at all, which I believe if Undead Labs were to maybe add to small slot outdoor, it would make this base a ton better than it currently is. But the way it currently is, is the, you have to use a, if you want a watchtower, you have to build the builder's watchtower. But from what it seems like a lot of you guys are saying is the watchtower doesn't seem to be doing anything due to the locations of the tower. So I guess if you have a watchtower here, it's not able to shoot anywhere, is really. The coverage of it, I guess, is really, really bad. Now, for these, it does have the three indoor slots, but I guess in my head, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, large slots, this, has, this is basically going to be awesome. But realistically, like, what can you even put here? And then on top of that, you have to go through the grind of... All right, say you want a trade depot. So you put a trade depot. Now you got to go and pr demote that leader, promote another leader, and then you build a field hospital because you don't want to dare waste any of your small slots on the infirmary. So you build a field hospital and this, you know, another slot. And then, you know, I don't, let me know, guys, in the comments below, if you guys have found a good combination of facilities and what they are to make this base truly powerful that's outposts and facilities that you guys were able to customize to make this base a powerhouse because as of right now guys i personally am not seeing it uh and from what i've been hearing from a lot of you guys a lot of you guys aren't seeing it either um i personally believe this base will be so much better if this big empty area here just had two outdoor small slots like come on undead labs make it a little more op you guys were talking about it being op well let's actually make it op all right now, guys now to touch home on the last most unique part about this base is the sawmill that is built into it now this is pretty cool it allows you guys to generate materials all you need is power and manpower and you can generate materials guys which is really really cool at the expense of making a lot of noise and it taking more time. This takes 24 minutes, 30 minutes, and 36 minutes, which I'm pretty sure once you get your base morale not in the negatives like mine is currently, it would probably be much shorter times to get these done once your global action speed is down a bunch. And I guess it is a good way to get zombies to attack your base. But, um... It, I, I still personally don't feel like three materials is probably worth the amount of effort you're going to be going through to generate those materials. You're going to be spending a lot of ammo, especially if you kick up a, a pretty big siege. You're going to have to deal with a giant siege, potentially people dying at the expense of, what, three materials? So I just don't see it. I just feel that they undertuned um this base quite a bit i felt like for this sawmill maybe if you're gonna do this 36 minute you know tw plus 12 zombie threat for 46 minutes i f that's pretty much a whole day in game guys that you're gonna have this increased zombie threat i just feel that if you're gonna be taking those kinds of risks i feel that they should you know potentially give you maybe at least seven eight materials nine materials even and I feel like, okay, at that point, it might be worth it. But to plus five zombie threat for one material, like, why? Why would I want to wait 24 minutes and risk my base at the expense of two labor at that for one material? I, I just, I don't think it's worth it. I feel that this is very undertuned. And if they really want people to enjoy some of these bases, I feel that they need to change some of the tuning on a few of these bases but that's my thoughts on the lumber mill guys 
and let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments and we will wrap this up all right guys so that is my personal opinion of all the bases i personally don't like a couple of them um i don't really like the lumber mill so far i'm not a huge fan of the fire station and uh the two large bases, I guess you could say, are my two biggest disappointments. My favorite bases on the map, guys, honestly, are the two mid-tier bases. I find them to be the best bases on the map, the most unique bases on the map. I don't really want to judge the starter base. I do think that the starter base is underpowered in comparison to the other starter bases. But since this is the starter map now, um, I guess it's all right. You know what I mean? It, it's all right for what it is, a starter base. But, guys, I would have to give, if I were to rank these bases 1 to 5, I would have to say my favorite base would be the fenced warehouse due to the just the insane amount of storage, guys. This is a base that you could truly live in long term. It has enough large slots to truly sustain and enough small slots to really have a lot of customization. I believe that this base is the number one base. I would then have to say the Fortified Truck Stop is probably my second favorite base. Then I would have to give it to probably right now I'd have to say the Fire Station. Even though the lack of customization hurts, I still think it's far. It has a lot more customization than this lumber mill. But at the moment, guys, and then obviously the starter base, I don't really want to include that. But, it, I mean, it's a starter base. But... Let me know what you guys think. If you guys agree, if you guys disagree, downvote the shit out of this video. But if you do agree with some of the things I said, let me know, guys. Let me know what you guys think. If you have some, like, magical combination of facilities and outposts that really turn this base into a powerhouse, please, guys, let me know. Because I am currently talking with other people, and it seems like everybody's kind of having a hard time with this base. It's just underpowered i believe but that's my outlook on it guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think and i am looking forward to reading thank you guys again like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one peace